Yeah, Marie Marie Lare was like <laughs> listening to the commentary. Wait a second. Wow, no, rookie a check. She missed Forget it. about everything. No. If you want to know why Peter Leko and Naroditsky reacted the way they did and couldn't believe what was going on, then let's take a look at the game. White, Pauline Guichard, was playing against Maria Musichuk, who used to be women world champion. So the, the white player is rated 2350, black is rated 2500, and the grandmaster. White starts with first d4. Black reacts with knight f6, c4, e6, and now knight to f3, probably trying to avoid the Nimsu Indian after knight to c3. So d5 was played. Now we have a normal queen's gambit declined, knight c3, and Maria Muzichuk now plays c6, a transposition into the semi Slav. e3, and this is the Main line, bishop g5 is another move. Knight b to d7. And now what can be played with very similar ideas like in the game is bishop to d3, then c, uh, d takes c4, bishop takes c4, b5, bishop d3. Instead, white played queen to c2, delaying bishop to d3, so black will not capture as long as the bishop hasn't moved. So bishop to d6, bishop d3, black castles, white castles, and now black takes on c4 because the bishop already moved, it's already on d3, now the bishop takes. b5, and now white has a choice between two moves, or three moves, but we will not consider bishop to b3 because it's just hitting this pawn and not achieving much. So there is bishop to d3, but then might follow bishop to b7, e4, e5, and we will just go through the ideas of the of these moves in the game, because the game was very similar. d takes e5, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, and now h3. And the key difference to the game is that knight to d4 here is not working. As you can see, there are a lot of pieces here, so this doesn't look very healthy. So now let's go back. Bishop to e2 was played instead, then followed bishop to b7, e4 threatening e5, and this is a, for, um, a fork, a pawn fork, so not what black wants to allow. So black stops it with e5. So white captures on e5, knight takes e5, and now knight to d4, there's no need to take on e5. Then follows knight e to g4. Now we see oh, a lot of pressure against h2. White must react. g3. And now black has several moves and a very fascinating move is bishop takes g3, h takes g3, and the idea was to clear the file of the queen against the d4 knight. And take the knight, queen to d1. And I was amazed to find this idea because white is a pawn down, but voluntarily goes into the exchange of queens. And the idea is that white has the pair of bishops and is better coordinated. And white has a nice position, actually, because this knight is not a great piece of full compensation for the pawn. But let's go back. Another move would be bishop to c5 attacking the knight. And in the game rook to e8 was played. So increasing the pressure against e4. Knight to f5 was played. And now we see also another idea. Bishop to c5. Bishop to f4. And this is the old move. The modern one is bishop takes to a uh, bishop takes g4. And what I meant with we see another idea is that when the rook moved to e8, this f8 square became available for the bishop. So it might drop back at some point. Queen to b6 was the game move. King to g2. 
and now g6 and white doesn't have good squares to retreat so white just counters with h3 g takes f5 h takes g4 knight takes e4 and now the idea is to take the pawn on f5 now it's five pawn against five pawns again knight takes c3 b takes c3 and the position is equal bishop f8 bishop f3 then followed c5 black is eager to exchange the bishops and also by playing c5 the white squared bishop isn't that bad anymore while this bishop was good so exchanging the bishops is very good for black and the position is completely equal f3 played queen to e7 rook to f2 and until now until move 25 both players had have followed the game Wagner against Stefansson in 2015 and this was a blitz game but still it seems that they knew what they are doing because they were following this game and now Stefansson played queen to f6 in this position however Maria Muzichuk decided to go bishop to g7 white plays the obvious rook to h1 and queen f6 followed and now we see there's a weakness with this and um, white wants to push f6 but the queen on f6 is preventing this so queen to b1 in turn attacking this b5 pawn and now black could actually take on c3 and doesn't need to worry because there is never going to be a mate on h7 so this pawn would be also just free so so in case of queen takes c3 the best for white is queen takes b5 rook ac8 rook c1 and queen to b4 and the position is completely equal however black decided to play a6 and move on and black is the stronger player with by 150 points so she has good reasons to continue but yeah but the last move a6 wasn't good and the reason is because there's rook to h5 and white is just doubling on the h file so for example h6 queen h1 king h7 bishop to g5 queen b6 f6 and black is completely lost because of this weakness here so this is not working and instead black should really exchange the pawns of c3 and b5 so it's true black is the stronger player but from a position if you consider the position there is no reason to play a6 but a6 was played and white played g4 and now the queen took on c3 and it looks like black is a pawn up but there's this annoying f6 move but as mentioned earlier after queen takes f6 queen takes h7 check and this was the entire idea of f6 there is no threat if black reacts accordingly so king g3 played and now black plays a very strong move rook to e6 and the position is either equal or a little bit better for black because black is a pawn up and white doesn't have immediate threats right now if blacks just play plays good chess but in these positions it's not always that easy to play good chess and we will see why rook to d2 and this structure is very hard to beat and this is also what Leko and Naroditsky agreed on so yeah let's continue c4 played and this is an okay move maybe another move is rook a e8 but okay c4 played rook hd1 and now black should really go rook a e8 and the reason is because black played 
queen to g6. And this is bad because of just rook d8 check. And the idea is that after rook takes d8, rook takes d8, king e7, there's the very strong queen to g8, which was found by the white player. Bishop h6, trying to force some exchanges. And this is where Naroditsky and Leko were discussing because the game was basically over and they said there's no way white is going to miss it. And um, what they were talking about was queen to e8 check and follows king to f6, g5 check, bishop takes g5. And now the idea, queen, g8, uh, queen h8 check, sorry, king e7 and bishop to d6 check, uh, sacrifice. Well, if you look deeper, you see it's not really a sacrifice, it's winning material. Rook takes d6, queen f8 check, and this was the idea. Now the king has to enter the sixth rank, and then just taking the rook on d6, and it's check, the king has to move, and the queen is falling. And white is completely winning. Two pawns and bishop against queen will not be able to defend against the queen. But instead, what made Leko and Naroditsky to almost freak out was this rookie eight check, because this is allowing black to escape. And the reason is that after rook takes the uh, rook d8 check, there is king to c6. But the black player was in time trouble, yeah? So it's understandable why she did not find the move queen d8 check or was frightened or whatever. But black had almost seven minutes and still after rook e8 check, almost immediately answered with king to d7, which is good, but after rook d8 check, answered with king to e7 back, although king to c6 is the much better move. And now black might experience some issues, but let's go back. So here rook d8 was played and king to e7, so again giving white the chance to play the same idea with queen e8 check and then king f6 and g5. But yeah, somehow black wasn't able to find it with a few seconds on the clock and decided to repeat the position and a draw was agreed. A very fascinating game. It's very sharp, very typical for the semi-slav. These sharp positions are almost a standard if you play this opening. So let me know what you think about this game. Because in the analysis with computers, it looks like a bad game. But if you are playing without any help, without the engines, with the pressure, you might make similar mistakes. At least this is my opinion. So as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you are thinking about this game. If you want to support this channel, leave a like and feel free to subscribe. See you. Bye.